Hello there, folks. Hey, in this quick video today, uh, we're going to take two red line devices and we want to share data from one to another, but we want to use uh, MQTT uh, method and go through a broker to push our product or push our tags from one device, uh, publish, if you will, and then have another device subscribe to that and get those values. So in this case, uh, first off, I'm going to be using for this example, I'm going to be using the M, the EMQX. So if you Google EMQX broker and then click on the free public broker, this is pretty sweet because uh, they give you all the things you need to know to use this online broker all the time to do this. So this is going to be the item that I'm going to use or I'm going to send data to. And, uh, you know, if you look at it here, view broker stats. Uh, you're going to see this thing's doing a ton of stuff already right now as we talk right now uh, make it a little bigger you can see uh, there's a lot of stuff going on in this thing right now uh, a lot of traffic it's got all kinds of stuff so it's up and running which is great but if I go back to the main page like I said you need all this information right here this is really all you need so if I go to crimson and if I go over here to the left go to communications and on connectors you're going to add a new connector. Click that button. We're going to use the generic MQTT for this. And so you'll add that guy. And I'll just go ahead and do it right now. That. Boom. Click OK. And that lists it here. You're going to go ahead and enable that uh, connector. Let me delete it. Uh, the one I already had set up. So once you go ahead and enable it, you're going to put the host name right here, which is coming from this right here. There's the broker. You're going to place that, where's my little thing right here, into that field there. Now, uh, I'm going to make up a client ID. This screen or this HMI I'm using is called number 96 on my uh, so-called network here. So I'm going to call it Wazoo 96. You can call yours whatever you want. I got another one that we're going to use here in a second that be Wazoo's 98. Then you see down here where it's got publication topics? I just made something up, and I made the same. I'm going to publish to this and subscribe to the same topic. Uh, that's my goal here. So I'm going to do that on this guy. Uh, I didn't do anything down here. Uh, I did add a tag called MQTT status. And let me go over here to data tags. You got to look at this real quick. MQTT status is just a integer tag. And on the format of this, I did set the format to be multi-state. I gave it five states, and according to the manual, these are the states right here that it's going to be, and then I want to show this text when that occurs, so that's what I'm doing, and then that tag called MQTT status over here in communications, I just dragged it from here right into this field here, okay? One more thing here to show you, uh, well, hold on, let me go back to top here. On the network tab, I didn't do anything here. This is the default. That matches exactly what they're doing right here, port 1883. That's correct. Uh, oops, that's the other database. Uh, nothing else I've done in here. Uh, I'm not doing anything under device data. Tag set one. Uh, the only thing I've done here, two things. I have a tag over here on the left called H4K underscore one. And I went ahead and dragged that tag right down here like that. And then I did turn on tag rights. I'll talk about that in a second here. Well, tag rights will allow, uh, if the broker gets it from something else, it can publish, or, well, I'm going to subscribe, but it can publish that back to this unit so that it shows the changes. So I'm doing this with, uh, and I'm not doing anything the rest of these tags. The tag sets are disabled. So H4K is my tag. I got it on the display page. I'm going to go ahead and make this guy a little bigger. Like that, just so you can see it here in the video. I'm going to go ahead and save that. Let me go ahead and download that to this particular screen. Okay. And then I have another instance of Crimson 3.2 open. Uh, this one, exact same setup, using the same driver uh, right here. The, uh, you can't get to the top here. I don't know why it does. But the broker there, same exact thing. I'm using the same publication and the same tag set, same name. And I got tag rights enabled. There's that H4K. Let me go back to this one and make this font bigger here as well. 
Okay. Um, one more thing I want to look at here before I try this. Let me go over here. Yeah. And on this one, let me get rid of this dead band. I'll come back to this dead band in a second. Let me delete that dead band from there. Okay. Let's save this. Let's download this. Let's see what happens. We got the web server open for both these guys. So boom, here we go. Boom. Now look here. So here's H4K here, and here it is on this guy. So if I change it on this one, let's say I change it to 101, for instance, hit enter. Look, it changed over here instantly. And if I go over to this one and change it to something else, one, two, three, it changed over here as well. So this guy is publishing that to the Wazoo topic, and this one is subscribing and doing the exact same thing. So uh, you see the number change right away. Now, one thing I was going to talk about here, back here at data tags, one of the things that Redline has on uh, their tags is on the format tab, there's a dead band thing here. And the dead band is interesting because if I hit function, I think F1 maybe, is the amount the tag must change before it's transmitted by some driver, whether it's OPCUA or could be MQTT, any of the cloud connectors. So in this case, uh, can I get rid of that? I, maybe I can't. There we go. Let's say I put in here 25. So that value has to change by 25 before it will publish that. Okay. So let's go ahead and notice, team. This is HMI 98. I'm making this change here. So let me download that to that guy. We'll go back to our web browser here. All right. So uh, I'm not going to math. Let me put this at 150. Notice 150. There it is. Hmm, that was interesting that that changed. I think I down, yeah, I down, okay. So if I go to 165, notice it didn't change over here because it has to go greater than or, you know, it has to be a 25 change here. So this time, if I go to 195, for instance, that makes that change correct. But if I go to something 185, that's not enough to cause the, so that dead band is operating as, as I want. Now, one more thing I can show you here with this, it's kind of cool. Uh, if I go back to Crimson, and let me look here, team. Uh, is it here? Uh, oh, uh, nope, that's not it. I'm looking for the debug. Hold on, let me go over this one real quick here. This guy. Okay. All right, there's that. Okay, that all looks good. All looks good. I'm looking for the debug. Is it here? Ah, you see down here on the network tab for your generic MQTT, you have here your diagnostics, and you can enable this debug output. You can enable this here. And if you turn it on there and then go over to your web server, go to your web server on the left, and if you go to the features of your web server, go to the features tab. If you slide all the way down, you can enable your system pages. You can enable your debug console with commands. And if you want, you can turn on packet capture. You don't have to do that. But for testing, if you want to see this happen, so I've done that on both these screens. If I go back to the browsers for both of them, go back to here. Uh, let me just pick one of them. I'll go back to the main listing. If I click System Diagnostics, and then if I go to Debug Console, you can see here is the Debug Console. You can press Enter, Help. It'll show that. Let me make this a little bigger so you guys can see this here. Okay, and maybe I'll, screen, I'll go ahead and shrink this guy down a bit. Maybe I won't. Uh, I guess I won't. So anyway, all right. So let's try something here. So if we come over here and change this to 195, you don't see anything happen over here. What if I change this to, I don't know, let's go to 85, for instance. All right, notice right away when I change this, you saw some things happen here. Now, of course, if I make this bigger, this will make it. Now, you can actually look at this, and it's going to show you the MQTT traffic it received and so forth, what it also transmits back to it. So that's pretty cool. You can use the debug console to, uh, to show you some stuff happening. Now, since I did that on that one, I believe, I could be wrong, team, but let me go back here. And I don't believe on this screen that I did any, um, uh, what's the word I want to say? I didn't do any uh, uh, dead ban on this one. So I believe anytime I make a change to this, yeah, it's almost, it's instantaneous. See right there? See that guy change? So since I did that on this one, well, I, here I was going to show you. Let me do this real quick. Let me open a new tab. 
Give me a second. I'll put that number in here real quick here. If I do system diagnostics, debug console, if I make this, move it over here, this is the main page here we're looking at. Uh, and then this is the other part. So if I change this right away on this guy, you'll actually see the traffic here. And on this one, if I make this a little bigger, I just change it to 101, and it'll show you right here. There's, there's the 101 right there. So that's pretty cool. You can use the debug console to see if you're ever making it out to your uh, MQTT broker. And like I said, in this example, uh, I'm using this uh, EMQX. The cool thing is, is I'm taking data from one screen and sharing it to another one without having to do anything in the MQTT broker. It is just a subscriber and publisher. So that works pretty cool. Anyway, uh, if you got any questions, teams, let me know. This is really simple to set up and uh, really easy to use. Hey, thanks a lot. Have a great day. We'll see you later.